Will the keto diet make you lose weight? Is intermittent fasting actually a diet? Are gluten-free foods really healthier? Busting some myths and telling some truths about popular diets. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that there isn't a single diet that I actually promote. I think it's all about learning the basics of nutrition and learning to build a healthy relationship with food and then figuring out what works best for you, testing and trying different things and really getting your own opinion. So for today, I thought I would debunk some myths on popular diets as a nutritionist and also share some truths about them as well. So we're playing a little true or false game. Hope you enjoy. Let's start out with the keto diet. The keto diet is a very popular diet that involves eating a really high fat, low carb diet and like moderate protein and you have to really keep your carb amount super super low in order to enter a state of ketosis where your body will stop using glucose as fuel which is your body's primary source um, of fuel and then it will start using ketone bodies instead so let's look at a couple true false questions about keto the keto diet will make you lose weight that is actually true that is a fact but bear with me while i give you the explanation which may not be what you think so when you start eating the keto diet, you will drastically reduce your intake of carbs. And so your body will turn to your glycogen sources. Um, glycogen is basically the, the way your body stores the sugar that you don't eat. And those, those glucose molecules are stored with the molecules of water. So when your body starts using that glucose, you will also lose the molecules of water that they are stored with. And that's weight that will come off. Also, as with every diet, there will be this thing in the beginning like the honeymoon phase where you follow everything really well and you probably eat in a very important calorie deficit and you're just gonna shed pounds from doing that but trust me this will all come crashing down and you will gain all the weight back really quickly so yes the keto diet will make you lose weight like most diets that make you enter a calorie deficit but you will gain it all back and you will gain even more back keto diet causes constipation that is totally a fact that is completely true when you're on the keto diet there are so many sources of fiber that you aren't allowed to eat like most fruit and vegetables and also lots of whole grains and things like that that contain lots of fiber so that will really cause you to lower your fiber content and that can totally make you constipated because fiber really helps smooth out your bowel movements so that is a really common side effect of the keto diet and any like high protein low carb diets in general. I wrote an article on the keto diet a long time ago, but you can still check it out if you're interested. It's going to be in the description. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is a practice that involves eating during specific periods of time. So you only have this one window where you're allowed to eat and that can vary. It can be like an eight hour window. It can be like you're allowed to eat um, only during certain days and you have to like fast for an entire day. It really depends on the person and the way that you choose to practice it but basically that's that's the, that's the diet and then when you're in your window where you're allowed to eat you don't have any rules or like calorie counting you can eat like pretty much whatever you want and if you're interested in more details about intermittent fasting i made a video about it right here but let's get into the popular myths on intermittent fasting intermittent fasting prevents aging that is actually true but take this true with a grain of salt this has been shown in certain studies on animals not yet in humans but it's a promising start so some studies showed that feeding rats every other day led to them having a longer lifespan another aspect of this is that in our cells certain waste products can accumulate and it's known that food restriction or like fasting during certain periods of time can help remove that that waste accumulation and like prevent it actually from actually accumulating and that can help fight against neurodegenerative diseases again these most of these studies are on animals and sometimes it's for not eating during like long periods like a day or multiple days so you know it's hard to specifically apply this to the intermittent fasting that is like popular intermittent fasting isn't a diet so that is a myth i know that people think that just because they're allowed to eat what they want there's no rest restriction in the calories or in the food groups it still is a diet you're still imposing certain things on your body in regards to food you're imposing imposing these times where you're not allowed to eat and it's really not intuitive and it can lead it to the downsides that you find in many other diets like not meeting maybe 
maybe all of your nutrient requirements because you're eating in like such a short um, time window or binge eating to compensate for all this time that you haven't been eating and you've been kind of feeling hungry and then removing yourself from your intuitive way of eating and your hunger and fullness cues and then going more into diet culture so intermittent fasting is definitely a diet now let's look at the vegan diet a vegan diet involves excluding any type of animal products from your food or lifestyle so that means not eating any meat or fish or shellfish or anything like that and also not eating any eggs or honey or dairy and also not wearing like any fur or participating in like circuses or zoos or things like that let's look at a couple myths slash facts on the vegan diet a vegan diet is automatically healthy that is a myth a total myth you can absolutely be on a vegan diet and eat just vegan junk food all the time and be completely unhealthy and you can also be on a vegan diet and eat just fruit and be completely unhealthy if you're under eating in calories and not meeting like all of your macronutrient needs it's actually pretty easy to be unhealthy on a vegan diet really easy to be healthy on a vegan diet as well but just kind of shaking that misconception that you're automatically healthy if you're a vegan lots of people are vegan because for like for ethical reasons for the animals and things like that and they don't really care about eating healthy and they just eat like vegan processed and junk food all the time which is already better than eating regular junk food but still not the epitome of health so while you can be a vegan and be super healthy you can absolutely be a vegan and be totally unhealthy fruit is really healthy and should be consumed as often as you want that is actually a fact fruit is extremely healthy and has so many vitamins and minerals and fiber and just awesomeness for your body and the great thing about fruit is that it is like pre-packaged you can just eat it like that you don't have to do anything to it it's so easy it tastes good you don't have to there's no preparation involved so that's why i really love fruit and i always tell people that they should be eating more fruit you can never eat too much fruit i mean okay you can let's put a little note on that you can if you're overeating if you're not listening to your hunger cues and you're going like way overboard um you know not listening to your hunger and satiety as you can with any food you can overeat absolutely everything even like spinach leaves it's really difficult but you can so of course with fruit i wouldn't recommend eating only fruit for breakfast lunch and dinner but i do think that lots of people have this misconception that fruit needs to be restricted that it's kind of the same as eating like cake um because there's lots of sugar and that they should be mindful about the quantities and i'm here to tell you no you can absolutely have fruit whenever you feel like it as long as you're not overeating and as long as you're still meeting all of your other like macronutrient goals and that you're eating like balanced meals the atkins diet so the atkins diet is kind of rebranding itself so i know that things are changing a little bit but the global uh, thing about the the atkins diet is it's basically a really high protein diet and a really really low carb diet but mainly mainly high protein and there's different phases of the diet and for the first phase you're like not allowed to eat any fruit or vegetables it's like just protein so if you look at a couple myths regarding this diet the first one is that protein can't make you gain weight and that is false mm -hmm. Protein absolutely can make you get, gain weight. Eating too much of any macronutrient will make you gain weight. And I don't know why for some reason people think that protein is like the best macronutrient and that it just can never lead to weight gain. The first thing to take into account is that you're obviously not getting pure protein when you're eating all these like meat products. You're getting lots of fat in there as well. And fat isn't bad at all, of course. But just saying, you know, like it's not, you're not getting just proteins. And of course, protein is important and you can't really store it. So it's important to get enough. But if you eat only protein, that's your entire diet. That's not healthy. And you can gain weight if you eat too much. Carbs are bad for you and will cause weight gain. That is another myth. Okay, I agree that refined carbs maybe aren't the ideal thing that you want to be eating every single meal, but still you can eat refined carbs and be totally fine. But if we look at non-refined carbs so whole carbs that's actually good for you so many studies show that they are beneficial they have lots of beneficial fiber and nutrients and you really want to be getting those whole carbs that's what's going to enable you 
to feel full and satiated and not have to snack every two seconds because you're not getting your amount of glucose that your body needs. If you want to know more about carbs and whether or not they are bad for you, if this answer wasn't satisfying enough to you, I made a video on that that you can check out right here or in the description. The paleo diet. The paleo diet basically involves eating foods that your ancestors could eat. So not any like a modern processed foods or grains or things like that. Anything that could be like found by like hunting and gathering. So it involves like meats, fish, and like nuts and fruit and vegetables and that's pretty much it. And as for a couple of myths that surround the paleo diet, processed foods are less healthy than whole foods. So that's actually a fact in general. If you take like processed foods in general, I would recommend people to lower their intake of processed foods and then increase their intake of whole foods. But of course it isn't actually that simple. Processed foods, first of all, means lots of things. Just like cutting something makes it processed. So if you're getting like frozen veggies, that's like processed, but frozen veggies are actually super healthy for you and may even be like better than fresh veggies, which aren't processed. So technically that's like I like to use the definition of processed foods by Dr. Greger, which is nothing bad added and nothing good taken away. So these foods I don't really consider processed foods at all. But even if we look at like real processed foods, those are still um, totally fine to consume once in a while. They're still absolutely fine and they can be really helpful in lots of circumstances. So the message here is that you should increase your intake of whole foods and like limit your intake of processed foods but processed foods aren't the devil at all they're totally fine grains are inflammatory and should be avoided that is a myth there are so many myths surrounding grains and the fact that they promote inflammation i think the confusion stems from the fact that for like a really small portion of people so people who suffer from like celiac disease or gluten intolerance or, or things like that who have like really um diagnosed gut issues for these people then grains may be may be inflammatory but that is not the case for the majority of people. And actually studies show that whole grains are actually protective and anti-inflammatory. Maybe that's because whole grains contain a bunch of fiber and fiber has lots of anti-inflammatory properties and is just in general great for your body and your health. It has been shown that refined grains may be a little bit more inflammatory. So refined grains are that the ones that you find in like white pasta and white rice and in like anything that's like cake cookies things like that but if you're eating mainly whole grains brown rice whole wheat pasta bulgur quinoa all of these things like whole wheat bread you're absolutely fine you're actually doing your body a service and reducing the inflammation now let's talk about the gluten-free diet so the gluten-free diet involves not eating any food that contains gluten and gluten is a protein that is found in wheat in barley and rye so you can find that in any foods like pasta bread cakes cookies lots of baked goods and things like that and the myths slash truths that we have regarding gluten are gluten-free foods are healthier that is a myth a lot of people if they see a food that is labeled gluten-free they, they will automatically think that it's healthier but that is completely false it may actually be the opposite gluten is such a big component of the western diet that if you just cut it out for no reason just to follow the gluten-free diet you can be at risk of certain deficiencies many gluten-free foods are not enriched in uh, the vitamins and minerals that gluten foods have. Also, many gluten-containing foods like whole grains are filled with fiber that is really, really beneficial to our health. We are already not eating enough fiber as it is. You don't want to make it even harder for yourself by cutting out gluten and eating gluten-free foods. And often when you eat the gluten-free foods, when they remove the gluten, they still have to make it taste good. So they have, they're going to add like a bunch of fats and sugars or, some, or stuff to make it taste better and to have that similar texture so it's still pretty satisfying and that's like way worse than just eating the regular food so no gluten-free foods are not automatically healthier unless you're comparing like an apple and cake some people may benefit from avoiding gluten. That is a fact that is totally true. While I really discourage people who don't have any type of sensitivity um, to remove gluten from their lives, people who have celiac disease or gluten sensitivity absolutely should remove gluten from their lives. For them, this can really trigger an immune and inflammation response, and this can really damage their intestines over time, and we really don't want that. They can become really sick, and just they should absolutely avoid 
gluten. The proteins that make up gluten are very long and difficult to digest and just not good for anyone with any type of gluten intolerance. So that's a wrap for these myths and truths. If you have more questions about the diets I talked about or if you want me to fact check any other diet that I haven't talked about, I'll leave that in the comments and I can do another video on this. The best thing you can do is to choose nutritious foods, mostly whole foods and kind of limit processed foods, eat more whole grains, more fruit and vegetables, more nuts and seeds, eat more mindfully as well and build a better relationship with food. Make sure that you stay active and that you also care for your mental health and uh, you are all set to being healthy without needing to go on any of these really ridiculous fad diet. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one. Bye.